Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 312. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google Plus and the Dumb uh, SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he's also a, a Google product expert on the uh, AdSense uh, community. Richard Hearn is a troubleshooter for uh, higher echelon uh, websites. Uh, Richard is based uh, in Thailand. I forgot to mention that Masataki is based uh, in the UK. Richard can be found at redcardinal.ie. David Rosam um, is uh, based on, on in the sunny south of the UK uh, in West Sussex. Um, he is uh, an internet marketer, uh, a copywriter for 30 odd years and uh, an SEO copywriter for 12. You can find David at davidrosam.com. And Tim Kapper is uh, a Google product expert on the uh, Google My Business community. Uh, he uh, is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com uh, and uh, that's where he can be found. All right, uh, our first question tonight is, uh, it's why is there no session dimension uh, in a Google Analytics report? It's from Jay Low. Jay uh, said, uh, um, he said, my thought is that because a session is a set of uh, interactions combined, so you can't say a page has uh, X number of sessions. However, um, the landing page report has uh, session uh, uh, dimension uh, because uh, as long as the session is landing that page, they are counted in that dimension. I wonder if my theory is right. Also, I wonder if anyone knows how to create a report in Google Analytics that shows me uh, how many sessions visit a certain page uh, during their session. Is that what unique page view means? Thank you, everyone. Now, look, don't fight over it. There's plenty of room to talk. Ah, I wish uh, Stefan Hamel was um, with us. Um, well, it, it's... Um, let, me, let me see... Um, David Kutcher um, uh, answered this. He said, uh, uh, and, and by the way, I, I thank uh, David Kutcher and uh, uh, all of those people who answer questions um, through the week. David said, um, uh, unique page is, is the number of sessions during which the specified page was viewed at least once. Uh, a unique page view is counted for each page URL and page title combination. Uh, I, I see, so I think that's, uh, actually I think we had a glitch with our uh, scraping software there. I, I think that's, um, yeah, looks like um, the two comments have been combined. But anyway, we had an answer. So let's uh, move on to the next. Do you know what probably calls that glitch? The tilde. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, special characters. Okay. Okay, we have 12 questions tonight. We're into them uh, at number two so far. Fabius and Fabian Peterson 
um, said, he said, my blog posts have disappeared from Google completely. Um, he said, dear all, they were where previously uh, present, but now cannot even be found with the site uh, colon search operator. Does anyone know where they went? Uh, it's a WordPress blog uh, hosted by SiteGround. I took the XML sitemaps, including the posting pages from SiteGround, and added them um, in the Google Search Console, but that did not uh, seem to help. Thank you. I thank you kindly for any advice. It looked like it jumped in and jumped out again, did it? Yeah, I, I think that's what he meant. I think at the end he says it's, it's but but it's good. It's on Google now, so yeah. Okay. All right, let's um, move on to the next one. And, and we thank uh, Michael Martinez for his uh, um, contribution. We appreciate uh, that very much. All right, uh, Varun Kumar Riyat um, is, has a complaint. It's titled, uh, my old URL is still showing up uh, on uh, a search engine results page. Uh, Varun said, hi, SEOs. I changed my blogger URL two times to uh, um, https full colon slash slash best, S X, best SEO expert um, Chandigarh. Um, uh, well, look, yeah, it can be read uh, uh, at the, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. It's a blog spot. Uh, Go on, Dave, you can do it. You can pronounce it. Uh, <laughs> my, my, uh, I, I can talk it, but my eyes, uh, uh, you just can't keep up with it, particularly the way <laughs> I've got the screen. The, the terrible thing is, in his, like he's talking about, deleted the old Earl. It still turns in SERP. In SERP, what am I supposed to do? Does anyone see the irony in terms of what, what his, his, his site name is and him coming to ask this question? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for laughing. I shouldn't make fun. Mm -hmm. But never delete. I don't know how he deleted the old Earl, but I hope he didn't. Uh, I hope he didn't uh, remove it from Google, because that's not going to be a good thing. You can't, re you can't redirect Blogspot, can you? No, no it, it does it automatically. I think if you change, I don't know. There might be some tool in it. I think there is. There's a tool in it. So you, they they set up a tool so that you could migrate to your own domain, and you used to be able to fudge that. I think. Yeah, but it's but, it's a blogspot.com domain to another blogspot.com domain. Yeah, so. no, well then he probably he's just probably set up a new site. Jesus. He's probably changed the. I think you can change the the first bit. Before you can change your own URL, can you? You, uh, you, know, you can change the username on the blogspot.com. Right, so the subdomain. And I don't think that would be redirected. Mm. It's interesting. I wonder, is it or is it not? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't used Blogspot for a very long time. When I, I haven't used it in ages, but I remember, uh, and we're talking 15 years ago, I tried it, we moved the Blogspot across and we couldn't redirect nothing. Um, but if it's anything to do with, like, mind you, the the Google websites, you, you can change, you can change the subdomain. <laughs> um, but when you change it, it doesn't redirect to a new one. The old one just hits a four. It just hits four hundred four. We should probably just explain to him the bigger picture here. If he's serious about what he wants to do. He should probably go out and buy a domain for himself. And I wouldn't buy a domain that's best SEO expert in 
Chandigar, I presume, is what it's called. I would think of something that's a little bit better. Yeah, I think the old, the old um, dogspot.com domain is now returns. Blog has been removed. So, um, yeah, I don't think you can institute a redirect from one blog spot to another blog spot. But I may be wrong, but I think if you change the name, which I think you can do within the account, then I don't think it would be redirected, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, if you to use a custom domain, then it, it's fine. They will do that for you. But yeah, well, you could set it up to a custom domain, and then you could then you could potentially redirect that back to the new blogspot.com domain. Put it in the yeah, but then you, then he'll have to buy three domains, right? <laughs> no, I tell you, well, I don't know. Oh no, yeah. no, you can use the subdomains. That's true. So you, yeah. you can blog, you know, blog one dot custom domain, and then blog two. But, but, but really, what was he trying to do here? Yeah, so look, Varun, the thing is, if you're going to be building a name for yourself, and I'm assuming that's what you want to do, you want to build a name for yourself as an SEO, I would start creating a bit of a brand because, you know, you're going to be out there, you're going to be pushing ideas, thoughts, your own theories, your own work. People are either going to start getting to know your name and search for your name or your kind of you need a kind of a brand and best seo expert channel guys is it could be anyone it could be anything so start looking at something like you might just want to do you know uh react seo you know or you know i don't know if kumar's or you know you just could be calling it react seo and then your branding would be varun kumar react Chandigarh SEO, and that could be your, you know, in, in your title. But you need to start be building something which, you know, people, if they start recognizing you or if they want to reach out to you as a person because they, they like your work, then they can find you. And you want a more professional kind of uh, URL. And, and, you know, you really need to start thinking about that. You know, for for the future. Yeah. At the same time, actually, it might be a good idea for him to to play around a little bit more and learn a bit more using these throwaway domains. Yeah. And I mean, and while it's a it's a worthy aspiration. Uh, um, success comes from credibility and uh, starting out um, uh, um, without skills and declaring yourself to be the best SEO expert um, is um, not a clever thing to do. Tim Capper tried. Uh, Ernest, Tim, we don't know how big Shandigar is and he may be the only person with a computer there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, look, what, what you could do with this ultimately is okay. So you know, just think. So I, I would start thinking about your branding, um, and I, I wouldn't just get rid of this. You could use this as a point to a kind of citation for yourself. So you would just have a brief intro, who you are, and then actually point to your other one. Don't get clever with it. Just use it as a as a business kind of citation and then leave it at that. I mean, cause you've already created it, just leave it at that. Um, yeah, but you know, you've got to play around. I've played around with all sorts of things. Uh, <laughs> I've, well, still, we know that. I've still got directories out there, which I need to consolidate. And I've got, yeah, we've all played around, messed about, see what, see how far we could push things. Um, in fact, I've still got two throwaway sites, which have still got, penalties on them so you know you've got to play you've got to understand what's going on and how far you can push it and yeah but for the I long never period, any of those things did anyone else you want to know things here <laughs> i think Tim might be speaking for himself <laughs> but yeah you know in terms of this in a long term 
right? That's not going to be your ideal name for your for your business. Okay, let's move on to the next. This one from Jason High Angel High Angel Kang. Um, it's titled "My E-Commerce Website is Redirecting to a Shady URL." Uh, he said that I've had several members in an online community say that my e-commerce website is redirecting to shady URLs with several redirects occurring. However, when I access, access it from my computer or mobile device, the homepage loads normally uh, perfectly fine. And have uh, I have asked others around me to give it a test and no problem. But I used another browser in incognito mode and tested it uh, again. Um, and now I see that it is redirecting to a, a spam URL. Can anyone uh, confirm this? Uh, and the URL is www.grandsremedyusa.com. Um, what is causing this issue and how do I get rid of uh, these shady redirects? quite clever what was probably happening there was well not that clever but it was just a cookie they were redirecting once and setting a cookie not to redirect again uh, it just means you're the, the the server that site is on has been hacked or the shared hosting someone's inserted some files there's probably plenty of ways it could have been hacked but they'll have to get someone a professional person to go and actually clean it up yeah just like you said sorry i see you there yeah just on another just on another point here, Jason, um, you know, just searching you as Grant's Remedy, um, you know, Amazon is outdoing you, Sansa, which I didn't even know was a freaking shop, they're outdoing you, eBay's outdoing you, and then eventually I get down to grandsremedy.co.nz, grandsremedy.com.my, and Amazon again, um, you know, if those are owned by you, I would really start looking at creating one grand remedy and actually consolidating them into, you know, proper language pages. Um, they may not be owned by you. You might only have the, for the, for the States, you know, and I would really start looking at building your branding. Um, you know, having Amazon and Sansa and all of them and eBay all above you before your even your brand is a bit crap. I know you probably I don't know if you're selling it on those, but it's it's a bit naff. Start looking at building up your actual brand's name. You want to at least be getting some kind of uh, knowledge graph in there for your name. You know, um, if is this a patented remedy? Does foot powder? Uh, if it is, you know, um, at least try and get a wiki, brand, you know, for, for this. If it, you know, you, you can do if it's patented, because um, then it's technically unique. You could get yourself a knowledge graph at least, which would then redirect, you know, if people at the minute, at least people would be able to go direct to you via the knowledge graph instead of scrolling through every single other, uh, you know, shop online before they can even find you so there's some 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 work for you to be done on that side of things seriously thank you tim anybody else okay let's move uh, to number five on our run list it's from daniel hartnett um it's titled salvaging content from a penalized website uh, Daniel said, uh, a quick question. My brother had a website last year that was hacked uh, where someone um, uh, in uh, injected a bunch of spam links uh, into the site. Unfortunately, Google uh, completely kicked the site out of the index and it never recovered. It's unfortunate, but the content was solid. Um, it was um, 110 articles uh, with amazing graphics. I'm wondering if there's a way to salvage this content. Uh, um, should I just uh, purchase a new domain name and transfer all the content over 
and just 301 the old domain to the new website uh -uh. Um, my brother thinks it's a waste of time but i think it's worth a shot um, is there any advice from experts out there You know, it's it's difficult sometimes when people they try to describe what's happened, and sometimes what they describe it it, it it doesn't fully make sense. So he did say that the site that Google kicked the site out of the index, which that technically means they the Google de-indexed the site. Now I'd be very curious to know did that actually happen or not. Um, and then he said it never recovered. So I, I asked a question like, what did he mean by that? Like, did did he get a, like a penalty warning? Did he look in Google Search Console? You know, was there any warning of what was happening? Um, I think Michael Martinez gave some very good advice there that the content, if the old site was de-indexed and that content wasn't published anywhere else, he should just take that content and publish it on a new domain. I know Michael said you could put it on a subdomain, but it doesn't sound to me like this was a big brand website or that the domain would have been well known. I mean, if he wants to get a new site with a new brand and start new, he has all the content there. And if the content got de-indexed from the old domain, it's not in Google. So if Google liked it before, they'll like it again. And all he's got to make sure is he doesn't get hacked again. It, it, it sounds like if your site gets hacked like that, generally speaking, if you clean it up, and you file for re-inclusion, they should let it back into the index. So that's why I was asking those questions. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just get another domain, and, and, and he doesn't need, they don't need to invest in all that content, it's all there ready. They can just publish it and, and just start afresh. It should, okay, it's not gonna rank overnight, but if it was good content and Google liked it before, Google may still like the same sort of content, so I'd definitely go for it. I don't think they really need to go for the subdomain unless there's some reason they want to keep the old domain going. Yeah, that's good advice, I think, Richard. Yeah. But definitely well done again, Michael Martinez. He gave some good advice there, and, and I did ask him about why he was saying about the subdomain, and just to make the point that he was the, his use case was for branding, purely for branding. He wasn't suggesting that from an SEO perspective. It was purely because obviously, in his case, his client wanted to keep their brand going. So what he did was he moved their site onto a subdomain. Yeah. Which is certainly, it's not as, it's, it's not as, as, there isn't such a, a high overhead when it compares to having to rebrand and go with a new domain, so. Okay, let's um, move on to number six on our run list. This one from Maria Peterson. Uh, does uh, anyone have experience of reverse proxy for WordPress? Maria said, hi, everyone. After some insight, please... Uh, oh, I am after some insight uh, to maintain uh, SEO. I recently had a, a recommendation to move and uh, separate a high traffic, high ranking e-commerce sites WordPress blog onto WP Engine. It was recommended uh, in an audit as a uh, security measure. Maintaining the blog URL and WordPress permalinks under domain name.com slash blog with a reverse proxy. Our However, a last minute change and the images will now be published under blog.domain.com. To avoid duplicate content, uh, I have um, a robot's text which can be read on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions uh, Facebook group, but I still want those uh, images indexed um, previously were not on a subdomain. Um, okay, so I wonder, do, I wonder, do they mean here that they're also going to have to publish the blog on the subdomain? It's not clear whether it's just the image folder, like the only the images are going to be in the blog subdomain. 
like first things first is okay when you run reverse proxy like this to get your blog in a subfolder um it increases complexity sort of exponentially okay in terms of maintenance and things can go very wrong with this okay so you've got things like you've got wordpress it, wordpress thinks it's running somewhere else and you're using this reverse proxy basically to pull it from somewhere else and put it into your subfolder and sometimes that can be very messy in terms of like all these settings in WordPress where like canonical tags and various other things. You've got to be very careful with that. Now, it can be done. I've worked with quite a few companies that do this. Um, but the first question is, why did the images have to go on the subdomain? Because the reverse proxy should have handled that also. Or she could have just put the images somewhere else and told WordPress, this is where we're going to put it. Or she could, have the, she could have set something up to actually copy it from wherever it is into a subfolder on the main domain. Like I would say there's a solution to get the images onto the, onto the domain rather than subdomain. And that would take away this problem. Because like she's trying to use robots.txt to avoid duplicate content. That sounds to me like she's having to run the entire blog on the subdomain. That's not good. Yeah, That's going to cause all sorts of problems. Because even though you can stop Google going in, other people might land on these pages, and they might get there somehow. And suddenly they might start linking to these pages, and she's lo losing those links. Like, it's, you're fixing one problem by creating a bigger problem. So I would look for an alternative solution to get the images somewhere, or put the images in the CDN so that you don't need to worry about the domain at all. And it, you could probably use a CNAME with that also if you wanted to keep your own domain for, like, you know, for, to show up in, in search results. But, but I'd look for an alternative way to get the images on without having to use a subdomain and publish the blog in a subdomain. Thank you, Richard. I think um, that's um, the, the best answer we're going to get on that. Um, and uh, we thank you for it. All right, uh, let's move on to number seven on our run list. Uh, it's from Scott Clark. It's titled Local Business as a Web Page uh, Published Schema, including uh, name and address and phone number details. Scott said, schema question. Uh, if a local business has a web page published schema, including name, address, phone number details, will they uh, benefit significantly from introducing local business schema uh, onto their uh, details as well. Have you seen richer results as a result of this upgrade? In general, no. Because, you know, obviously, if you're implementing structured data markup anyway, you and, and you've got your address, your address is going to be either running in the footer somewhere site-wide on the site. So the address is in there. So by adding the the, the local business schema, um, it, it's not going to do anything in that sense. So, no. However, I have seen it benefit where it's a service area provider. And within the structured data markup, you're providing a geocentroid, and then you're providing an actual service area from that geocentroid, which helps um, Google to understand what that where that business area is serving and that also corresponds to for example their gmb page which corresponds with the same information so in that circumstance i have seen uh providing more in-depth uh structured data markup in the nap yes but essentially just um adding the structured data markup with your address and assuming you are going to be marking it up your address already has to be on page. You can't mark stuff up that's not on page. Well, you can, but in this instance, you shouldn't. Um, so in general, no. But in some circumstances, I have seen it benefit um, an understanding of where and how business serves. Let me throw this over to you, Tim, OK? I'm just reading his, his question, OK? And again, now, I could be completely wrong here, but here's what I'm wondering. Is he saying, he says, if a local business has web page publisher schema, including NAP. Now, my question is, he's saying the page has got schema on it that has a NAP, okay? But what is the type of that schema? What is a web page publisher? 
Like, I don't think, it doesn't sound to me like he's got a schema for local business. It sounds like he's got some obscure schema type, and he's including his address in it. And if he's using a schema type that Google doesn't support, they would be ignoring anything that's in the schema. Yeah, so... He says, will they benefit from introducing a local business schema? So he's, it sounds to me like he's got a scheme on his page, which isn't a local business, okay? It's something that he's terming as web page publisher. And something in that schema has a property where he's got his, his nap. He's got his, his name, it's got name, it's got phone, it's got address, okay? And now he's saying if he inserts a local business schema additionally with the nap, will it make a difference? And I'm curious just whether, now we don't know, I'm just throwing it out there that maybe what he's saying is that his, his CMS is putting something on the page which is some yeah. weird type, which actually Google is just gonna ignore. Yeah, it, um, it depends what it is. So for example, WordPress has a web page based schema that shows up in Google's own structured data testing tool. Um, but that tends to be for organization. I've never seen one where you can add local business, but it could have been the theme that they're running or something. But yeah, so um, you could, for example, is to have founder within organization or something like that, and then yeah. you can add a name, address, and phone number that way. As yeah, yeah. That's it within. Do you know what this could be? It could actually be a web page type, okay? And what he's doing is under web page, he's adding in a property which says publisher. And under publisher, he's having his name and address and phone number. Mm. So that's probably what it is, okay? It's a web page, okay, which Google does support, so that should be fine. But really, what he needs to do with this is he needs to take his page and go over to the structured data testing tool and see does it validate. And does yeah. Google recognize what's on it? Yeah. yeah, and also with local biz with local business, um, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, and I know, for example, some of the local business plugins, even the one that's actually on Schema at the minute, um, doesn't include image or price range. So if you're talking for richer results, yeah, you can certainly get richer results. Um, uh, if you're using image and you uh, just find the correct one. In fact, you can find one on my site. So online ownership, local business structured data. Um, in there, I provide a couple of examples depending on what you do. Um, so richer results, yes, because um, you can include price. Now, for a local business, you don't actually have to say from one to ten dollars. Uh, I'll give you examples. My mine I use on my site is price on quotation. Uh, for like hotels, I use um, uh, best rate guarantee direct, um, and and those appear. So those are richer results. They appear within the actual, um, not in desktop. They appear in mobile. Um, yeah, you you can certainly have richer results if you implement it correctly, but in terms of benefit significantly. I'm not entirely sure if it's just the name, address, um, obviously your phone number and that, which in theory is already on page. But you will see richer results, yes. But I'm not entirely sure on benefiting if you're talking, going from position five for a pet shop in Swindon to number one pet shop in Swindon. Um, Okay, thank you, Tim. Thank you, uh, Richard. All right, let's um, go to the next. It's number eight on our run list. It's from Amit Kumar Roy. It's titled A Significant Number of tra Traffic Drop. Um, Amit's a very perceptive person. He said, uh, hello, experts. Uh, he said, have you experienced a significant number of traffic drops recently? I have an electronics-based niche site, and, and I, I had around 10 keywords in the first place and many in the positions one to five. 
from around the 5th of December, my keywords started to lose their rankings and traffic dropped significantly. I lost around 70% traffic in 10 to 11 days. After the EAT update, uh, I tried to fix the trust issue and the uh, number of visitors increased up to 35%. I have no idea about the most recent update. Um, what the hell is this about? I don't know either. Um, earning has decreased considerably. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what to do now and what to improve. Uh, note well, uh, all of my contents are money content and a minimum number of informative contents. And so far, there was no issue in ranking so far. Uh, have you experienced the same? Would you please share your strategy? Um, what are you doing now? Uh, any kind of suggestion is appreciated. Regards, Amit. So the, f the first thing here is... I mean, you say you lost positions in certain keywords. Well, search that keyword and see who's appearing above you. Then you can see what kind of content Google likes. And then you need to adjust uh, your kind of stuff to what Google seems to be liking in, in, at that, you know. Um, it, it, it's... You know what I mean? I mean, if it's for, ex I mean, you say you're an electronic store, so I don't know. Um, an LZ1247 chip microchip, and all of a sudden you've gone from position one to position five. Well, what's in between one, two, three, or four, and five? Um, have a look at those sites. What are they doing? Why is their chip better than your chip page? Um, and also look at what other supporting content that they have created around that chip, and 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 their and their pages. I mean, it's a bit difficult to say to you. Oh, right, I, I know exactly why this is. You know, just yeah. But your starting point is to look at what at what is above you, and 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 what Google's liking at that particular point. Yeah, if, if this is a, uh, a shop of some sort, which is what I take it to be, um, you know, what what sort of quality do you have? You say m you say money content. All of my contents are money content. I'd say he's an affiliate site. Sorry, just to let you know, there's no indication that he's a uh, he's selling anything. Oh. I'd say he's an affiliate. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. So if you're an affiliate site, I mean, oh, so, right. Um, the first thing I would say is, look, everyone, I don't know, position one to 10 is going to obviously be selling the same specific product. So how could you improve that? Um, off the top of my head, uh, your image, first off, um, try and uh, get non-stock image of that either brand up that image with your branding. Um, I would look at your um, product description. Is everyone else using the same product description, manufacturer's product description? Can you add something else into that product description? Uh, can you add something else in this can be used in XYZ component? This would be good with this. This can be integrated with Raspberry Pi, um, you know, um i don't know what the product is um can you create are there any tutorials around that you would need uh to install this can you create some video content for the page um in terms of using that particular component um you know you, you need to provide something of use to the user uh, which is always good um but it shows a differentiation between yourself and the other bulk standard copy and pasted same product over and over and over again. Um, yeah. 
I, I just say I think there's very little we can offer like on an individual side. I mean, anything we can say is probably like conjecture at best, and um, we've no idea without looking at his side. But but I think there's some interesting things like when you look at like certainly Mar Michael Martinez comment at the end, um, like there's a couple of things here. The first thing is that like Google may be coming up with these new sort of quality based algorithmic measures of websites that's causing some sites to drop recently. We don't know how any of this works. We don't know if it works in real time. We don't know if it works on a batch base. We don't know whether they run it once a month, whether it runs every six months, whether they run it when you want. You don't know that the changes you made worked or didn't work unless you understand exactly what's going on. I don't think that everything Google is doing is in real time. I don't think it's possible. I think that some of the stuff that they're doing is is probably cannot be run in real time just because of resources. So it's very difficult to know what to do. And sometimes you'll see people saying, this is how I recovered my site from you know the eat update or whatever it is. There's no easy way to know whether that's real or not. So I'd be very careful about this. Um, the only thing I'll say just in terms of Michael Martinez, I think it's quite interesting his comment. He says that Google does not use eat as a ranking signal. Their update, updates are not about trust, which cannot algorithm be algorithmically determined. I think there's probably some, some, some worthy discussion around that. I don't know what everyone agrees with that. I don't know. Um, we don't know what they use as a ranking signal. I don't think Michael Martinez knows what they use as a ranking signal. So what people are referring to is eat. We don't really know that Google refers to that algorithm, algorithmically in the same way. Um, I'd imagine there are, probably are quite a number of metrics that they can use as proxies for trust. So I wouldn't be so sure about what Michael says about that, that trust cannot be algorithmically determined. I'd imagine that it can. And I'm doing some research recently on entities and how they're building their entity engine, their knowledge graph. And I'm sure there is trust involved in what they do. It may not be what we perceive to be trust, but it's the same thing for an algorithm. So I think there's no easy answer to this guy about how to fix his site. No one will know, and he may never know either. He may just have to start again. Thank you, Richard. We move on from this one. Okay, so this question is from Nazman Nahir. Uh, it's titled Hidden Content Gets Less Weight uh, for Ranking. Um, Nazman said uh, this page, https uh, full colon slash slash cryptomaniacs.com, uh, learn what is Bitcoin, has hidden content uh, in CSS that opens in scrolling. I know Google can crawl the full content, but my question is, does this type of content get less weight for ranking? Uh, if yes, uh, could you please suggest any solution without changing the user experience or maybe changing a little bit? Uh, thanks in advance. See, Michael Martin is. Uh, he, he added some, some there, but it's funny. He said they they might not choose. They might choose not to index the content. That's not quite what they said. I think they said that they would. They might dampen the content, which is invisible on the page, so that it they, it wouldn't bubble up quite as easily as other content, which is visible. I've worked with some really big sites that that do put content behind, like you know, tabbed interfaces and or down in footers out of view. I mean, I don't think anyone would argue that content that sits in a footer that no one might ever see on a very long page, it probably doesn't carry as much weight for search. So let, let's leave links or whatever else out of it for now. But just the content for search, it's very rare that you do a search on Google and that they bubble something up in the search results and you have to scroll down into the footer to actually see that content. So I wouldn't quite fully agree with what Michael says there. 
I think even visible content in some cases, if it's not in a good position on the page, it may not bubble up quite as easily as, as a, a similar page that has it higher up. Um, but I know that if you think the content is important, I would actually just make it visible at all times. And I would also give a prominence on the page. Because Google, OK, they extract the content on the first pass, but then they're going to render the page at some stage. And they're going to see where the content is on the page. And that's going to give that's going to be a ranking factor as well. So, like I say, if something is hidden or it's down the footer, they're not going to send a, a a searcher to something that's down in the footer or something that's hidden away that they can't find. There's nothing worse from a user experience perspective than going to a page because you've been told something is on it but not been able to find that content. So, you know, you can put two and two together. If it's important, make it visible. Thank you, Richard. I agree. By the way, for mobile, it is different because mobile interfaces are different. So things are people are used to having stuff hidden away. But still, I'm sure it still counts even for mobile a little bit. Yep. OK. This one uh, is from um, Burns J. Pragides. Uh, um, it's number 10 on our run list. Uh, he said, is the paid version of Yoast worth the money? If the features that come with the paid version are useful to you, yeah, why not? If not, why would you pay for it? I suppose it gets rid of some of those bloody ads that you get from, uh, from Yoast Free. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing about Yoast is, I mean, I think they've done a great job to build a business, uh, you know, and a business model around some of those plugins. Um, but, you know, they've had their problems also in the last while where they've, you know, as they get bigger and it gets more complicated and complex, they've had bugs in it. And, like, some of those bugs have caused quite a lot of damage to sites. Okay, they've certainly worked very diligently to try and recover from those issues, but like it is worth mentioning that they have had issues. And I suppose you may want to be more more cautious if your site is is of higher value. Yeah. Uh, I would also say um, you know check out check out what the paid version is offering. I don't really see any difference between what what it's offering to what I would benefit from, so I've never used it. But there's Google released their own their own um, plugin. Um, shit, what's it called? Um, it incorporates analytics, search console, and other debugging things. Um, uh, it was released this week, I think. And let me just see if I can find it. In fairness, it's not just more or less reporting, though, from their services. There's no, I mean, it's yeah. not like anything at WordPress, is it? There, there is on page stuff. Um, is there? Yeah, there's more. There's, uh, I've been meaning to cite something, cite. Uh, um, Can you not find it on search, Tim, no? No, <laughs> because they've got, I've had quite, because everybody calls their plugin Google plugin. Um, Just look it up on Twitter to flow by at some point. Yeah. Okay, well, we call this an answer for. Uh... Burns? Yeah, well, anyway, there's a new plugin from, from Google. Check it out. And I, I would like to, to give a plug for an SEO press. Uh, Jules G mentioned it uh, in the community answers. Um, I've been using it for a couple of my clients and also on a couple of my personal sites. And I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so that's it. Yeah. 
Which is that, David? Is that the Google plugin or is that the oh, Neo Press? Is a uh, is a um, is just a, another um, SEO plugin. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, I happen to like it. It seems to do um, more than things I want to do without getting in the way and without um, just offending me with loads of ads. Okay. All right. Let's um, go to the next. We've got uh, two to go. Um, this one from Den Ludwig. It's titled Creating Structured Data Links on Google Search. Uh, Den said, uh, or asked, he asked, uh, does anyone know how to get the menu tabs on the Google search results? See screenshot, uh, which can be viewed on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, they are tab shortcuts that link to the website. I don't know what they are called. Any help would be tremendously appreciated. I can't find uh, anything in Google My Business about it. What, are they fragment links or what are they? Does anyone know? Yeah, they're just a, a little button um, in, in a search result. Uh, they appear under under the result. A button? Yeah. And it I, takes you to a third-party site and not to another search result in Google. Now, I can't remember now. It was a, it was this week that I, I, I had a look at that. And uh, I just got off on the Google site. It, it might be that they're tri trialing a, a, another form of um, presentation. But, uh, yeah, it was, they, they, there's uh, a little row of buttons um, with a keyword in them. Shall we? Yeah, um, that probably takes you to another Google search. No? I think they took you to the page um, um, where... Well, it says, yeah, they are tab shortcuts that link to the website. So I would just call them site links. So are they site links or are they fragment links that are in a like? I understand now the tab is the round button, and that's just a styling thing. It's uh, what's it called again? Uh, oh, there's a name for it. So where do we need to go to? Where is this question going to be? Some SEO questions. I'm creating structured data. Is the last question most recent, Jim, or the or oldest? Um, look, it, it it depends on how the scraper um, is working today. We're working on it all the time, so I can't give you an answer to that one. I'm sorry, Richard. No worries. I'm just looking to see. Uh, While you're looking there, we're just uh, losing Tim Kapper um, and I uh, hope to see him next week. Yeah, yeah, see you all. Ciao. See you, mate. No, I can't find it now. Uh... I'd love to see this screenshot, um, but I cannot find it. I can't okay. find the question. Yeah, um, on your run list, uh, there should be a link this post. It will take you directly to that post. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. That's yeah, stupid. That would have been the obvious thing. Sorry. Uh, about us. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, now this is on mobile, all right? So, you know, you've got to... It would have been, yeah, if we had known it was on mobile, it does make a difference. So uh, I'd say they're basically like site links. I'm honestly, I'm not 100% not sure how that works, but I'd say they're, they're site links. They're the equivalent of, mo of site links on mobile. So that's not something that you can do yourself. Google will pick them up based on people, you know, searching for stuff on your site or visiting certain pages in your site. It's not something that you can 
you can push Google to put up for your site. So there's not much you can do with that. Okay. All right, let's um, move on to the next, if I can find my mouse. This one from Madeline Ross. Um, does the, it's titled, uh, does the use of hyphens uh, in a domain name correlate uh, with spammy behavior? Um, Madeline said, hi, I'm about to register two domains for a client. As their long names made up of three words, should I hyphenate the words? Uh, Moz says that use of hyphens strongly correlates with spammy behavior and decreases uh, domain name readability. Your thoughts? I'm going to hazard a guess that that Moz thing she's talking about is probably from around 2008. Yeah. So I, I don't know whether the correlation will be as strong these days because I'd say spammers, they don't use, they don't use hyphens anymore. Hyphens used to be used when exact match domains had some power. Um, but like that's a long time ago. Like That's like 10 years ago. Um, I'd say that spammers nowadays, they don't bother with, they don't, don't care about hyphens. They're probably, you know, using all sorts of ways to, to get their content live. So, um, like I certainly wouldn't necessarily agree that, that it decreases domain name readability. It doesn't decrease readability. I'd say it actually, by having word boundaries, it makes it easier to read. The problem is that if you're going to build a business, there's the old thing called the radio test. And if you've got to spell your domain to somebody, you've lost. So generally speaking, I think you're much better off trying to go for a short domain that doesn't have hyphens. And I wouldn't necessarily have more words in your domain. The shorter, the better, generally. I mean, most of the best brands in the world are on short domains. They're not on, you know, two, three-word long domains. So I w unless, you know, this is the thing as well. She may be thinking that if she goes with a sort of keyword domain, it might help with her SEO. And you know what? You know, any sort of benefits you might get from that, you're probably going to lose a lot more from other areas, like just branding and marketing in general. So... At first, I would register or buy a domain that doesn't have hyphens. That's the first thing. But I would also try and keep it short that people will remember and people will be able to type in and get to your site if you actually, if your business works out well. So, but ignore that Moz stuff. It's probably, like I say, go back to it and check the date and see, is it like from 10 years ago? And chances, chances are it is. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. And I think, yes, it is. It's thank you for watching time. We thank you for your interest in um, what we do. Uh, we'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do it again. Um, but for now, it's uh, good night. Still on air, I think. Yeah, I know. I'm just waiting to see why it won't die. <laughs>